listening to, you are absolutely listening to the George Esper Love Show coming to you live from the Funny Farm. Now, with no further ado, here comes Georgie! Thank you. Oh, my. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There there are certain nights that you've got that little bit more oomph about you. Uh, And this this is certainly one of them. And this is... Wednesday night. I think this is Wednesday night. Anyhow, whatever night it is, I know that it's October 2nd. So let's see. So this must be Wednesday night. All right. Uh, Anyhow, it's Wednesday night and we are delighted. Whether you're down the street, around the corner, across America, or somewhere around this great big world, we want you to come on in, bring a friend, or reach out with whatever device you reach out with nowadays and tell somebody that the George Espinlob Show is live and we are coming to you live from the Funny Farm. And we live in our world. And we want you to come in and be a part of our world. And we have two goals here in mind, and we say it so many times. We have one goal is to make you smile. I don't know what you're going through in life. I don't know what storms you're facing. I don't know what valleys you're going through. But I do know one thing. If we can just bring a smile to your face, but for a few seconds, we'll be happy. If we can make you laugh, we'll even be more happier. And then the second goal is this. It's very simple. Very simple. We want to make you Uh, They're going to laugh before I even say it because they know what I'm going to say. We want to make you just as goofy (laughs) as the rest of us here at the Funny Farm. And so we want you to come back. We put chairs in the chat room. There's chairs out on the floor. Uh, People are sitting in chairs outside. Uh, They're sitting in the back of their pickup trucks and tractors and rickshaws and anything else they can set in. Uh, Sometimes people around here at the Funny Farm even sit up in the tree branches. Uh, So, (laughs) you know, whatever suits your fancy, we've got a place for you. But tonight we have chairs. We invite you to come into the chat room. And if you have questions for our guests, please, please don't hesitate. Ask questions. I'll try to follow them. (laughs) Sometimes y'all go so fast that I, I can't keep It looks just like a blur going down through there. Uh, But I'll try to keep up with it. If you have questions, just put them in there. Uh, I'll try to capture them, (laughs) and we'll we'll ask our guests. We've got a great, great show planned for you tonight. Uh, Intriguing. I think you'll be spellbound. Uh, I, I think that you will hear the man's heartbeat that we have on tonight. And we want you to just sit back and enjoy yourself. Portion of the program tonight is sponsored by Grummy's Custom Flags. That's G-R-U-M-M-Y apostrophe S. Grummy's Custom Flags, custom-made wood flags, made to order with logo of your choice. Look Grummy up on Facebook, Grummy's Custom Flags. And if you want, call Travis. His number is 814, that's 814-207-5489. That number again, 814-207-5489. And we'll be saying more about that in a little bit. Wow. We have a guest with us tonight that, where do I start? Uh... He's a principal man. He's a good friend. I put in our show page info 
this evening that we've known each other since we were pups. And <laughs> we were pups at one time. Uh, it's, I know to a lot that it's hard to believe that, but we were pups at one time. We were fortunate enough to grow up in a full gospel church where we were surrounded and influenced, and, and, and I don't say this lightly, we were fortunate enough to be surrounded by and influenced by what I consider spiritual giants. To this day, their influence resonates in my heart, and I know that Kenny can say the same, uh, same, same thing for him. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you a fine, fine gentleman, my friend, soon to be your friend, Ken Ferguson. Kenny, and it's always been Kenny to me, uh, <laughs> it is a delight to have you back on the show, my friend. George, it's good to be here with you. Wow, there's been a lot of water that's went under the bridge and a lot of bridges that went underwater. How about that one? <laughs> I was thinking about the the comment about pups. We were ornery pups back then. <laughs> Boy, ain't that the truth. My, oh, my. Uh, I hope some of that never gets out. <laughs> yeah. Some of the, you know, uh, talking about godly influences, also I believe it's the prayers of these people. You know, they're like, most of them are long gone to glory, but uh, the prayers followed us like uh, bloodhounds and uh, kept us on the track or got us back on the track. Isn't that the truth? I oh my. Mm. Uh, yeah, there was some real, <laughs> real prayer warriors that gripped the horns of the altars uh, as we were coming up. And they, uh, yeah. when they went before the throne, uh, they went in, and they wasn't coming out until they persevered. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm. Kenny, you've been a missionary for a long— 40 years. 40 years, a long, long time. Yeah. I had I had, yep. I had Stan Williams on here with us uh, a few weeks ago. Mm. Uh, lifetime friends that have been in lifetime ministry— yeah. Wow. Lord is good. He's faithful. 40 years. 40 years. You graduated from Altoona High School in 1965. Wow. <laughs> you yeah. know, when you, when you tell kids that date nowadays, do they look at you like you got two heads? Like you're ancient. It seems like yesterday, George. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I almost wish it was at times. Yeah. You, yeah, times have changed, haven't they? <laughs> they sure have. You went to Central Bible College, or you graduated from Central Bible College in 72, right? Yeah, that's right. And then you were in the Assembly of God World Missions from 1980 until present. Be mm -hmm. Between 1972 and 1980, Kenny, what, what, what were you doing in ministry? Uh, we were pastoring in western Pennsylvania, a town called Aliquippa. Mm -hmm. It's known mostly by its athletes it put out. <clears throat> and then uh, I went to seminary for a while and drove truck to, to put food on the table. And then I took a little home missions church down east in Chalfont, Pennsylvania, Bucks County. And uh, so while we were there, the Lord started dealing with our hearts about missions uh, I always tell people, Kathy prayed more than I did. She always felt like she wanted to be a missionary. I was happy pastoring a church. But, uh, in 1975, we took a trip to the Holy Land, and we traveled through Israel. Of course, I'd been studying Hebrew in seminary, and that's, that was my interest. But when I got there, <clears throat> kind of uh, my heart was taken by the Arab people. I, I knew very little about them, I, and I knew nothing about Islam back then. And uh, it was a process. It was several years before uh, we focused on the Middle East. And uh, we went there for the first couple of years. We 
work mostly with Christians. It was kind of odd now that I look back at it. We were in a country of 10% Christians, 90% Muslims. And it was just like we were ignoring that. And one day the Lord opened my eyes and I said, yeah, I don't know anything about these people. And I think at that time, most Americans didn't know anything about them. And still a lot don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I made it my life's ambition is to to learn, first of all, relationally from them and to uh, <clears throat> commit the rest of my studies, my doctoral program uh, on learning a little bit about Islam. As I travel around the world and go to uh, countries where, with Muslim majorities and Christian minorities, I was... Uh, it's kind of funny to find out that most of these Christians were the same as the Americans. They didn't know anything about Islam. Mm. So uh, our our ministry with started out. It was the name of it was the Center for Ministry to Muslims. It's now called Global Initiative. Somebody higher up the pay scale than me didn't like our the name that we chose, but. Uh, <clears throat> our mission is to equip the church to reach the world's, and this part's always changing, 1.7 billion Muslims. That's an amazing figure, isn't it? Oh, staggering. You know, we go, we go to a country like uh, Indonesia, which is the largest group of Muslims. Uh, I don't know the number there. Somewhere between 220, 250 million Muslims, Bangladesh and Pakistan, both, uh, and, and India. India we think of as a Hindu country, but they're all uh, around 150, maybe maybe in, India has close to 200 million. I don't, I don't know. Mm. I used to be up on those statistics, but they're changing so rapidly. Uh, it's, it's growing religion in those, that part of the world, mostly by birth rate but uh, they are coming to the west and their their goal is to evangelize and make the west Islamic you know George we have we study it in Bible schools uh, and we learn in Sunday school the Great Commission yeah and uh, evangelical churches Pentecostal churches we have missionaries, we sent them out to the world, and the, and the Pentecostals especially were fueled by the urgency that we feel that Jesus is coming back, and uh, sometimes <clears throat> sometimes we don't plan real well for the long, long haul, but anyway, I, I thank God for that. That drives us on, but Muslims, they don't have that urgency. They're in it for the long haul, and when they come, if they can make America Islamic in their lifetime, that's fine. If not, maybe in their son's lifetime. If not, maybe in their grandson's, maybe in 100 years. But make no mistake about it, that is their goal. You know, Kenny, I've often said that the enemy and (laughs) people don't need to look very far to even begin to understand that we're fighting not against flesh and blood, but against yeah. principalities and powers of darkness. Yeah, that's right. Uh, these, these are people that Jesus died for. Yeah. Number one, they are fervent. Uh, they are zealous in what they believe and what their goal is, and they're willing to do anything, even die, yeah. Yeah. for the promotion of that. And I was sitting here thinking... Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, (laughs) somewhere along the line, we said, uh, well, Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to these, those, them. uh, Don't worry about this one (laughs) over here. Do you think that's what happened somewhere along the way? Well, yeah, you know, there's no doubt about it. It was a very difficult group of people, and there were uh, various reasons. Uh, sometimes people were afraid to go 
these countries, uh, the lack of response, uh, the low, uh, you know, people want more bang for the buck. So if we go to Latin America, we have uh, more, and, then, and we need missionaries there. I'm not saying that. But <clears throat> when we went, uh, the statistics are telling us that less than 2% of the evangelical missionaries in the world were going to more than 23% of the world's population. Hmm. It's, uh, it's staggering. Now, that's changed, thank God. Uh, there's a lot, you know, we've wakened up. Uh, we we didn't know much about Islam, but they brought, they, they educated us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they came here. And, uh, but, you know, it's good news, too. A lot of Muslims getting saved today, and uh, we get testimonies all the time. I was reading just the other day, uh, either the latter part of last week or early part of this week, that there is a real move of God going on in Iran. Uh, yeah. And people are leaving the Islamic religion and accepting Christ. That's true. Many other places, too, but Iran especially. And of course, that, that whole area, uh, Iran is uh, <clears throat> in turmoil. They're not satisfied with their economics. They're not satisfied with their government. They're not satisfied with their religion. And uh, people are looking. Uh, there's, a, there's a thing going on in the Middle East. I can't even talk about it. I uh, can't give you much information. But uh, a network of what we call Muslim background believers or Christians from the Muslim background from different countries. And they have... Uh, they have a network <laughs> with or without Western missionaries. They're, they're doing the work. And uh, some of them, <clears throat> and uh, you know, I wouldn't want to broadcast this too far, but uh, it's okay for us to know. But uh, they're, they're, some of them have gone to Saudi Arabia, and they still go on the Hajj because they're still recognized as Muslims. And they get together in their groups and pray and, and go out and witness in the villages. They put their life on the line. One testimony came back, and I'll just share this, and I'll stop talking about this. But uh, they had shared the gospel in one area, and several people had given their hearts to the Lord. And this one guy was weeping and weeping and weeping. And sometimes that happens whenever people come to the realization of what sin is, because they do not believe in original sin. But uh, I thought, boy, there's something wrong here. So they, one of the guys went over and talked to him before they left. They said, why are you weeping? You should have joy now. He said, he said what, what has taken so long? What has taken so long for you to bring the good news to us? My mother and my father died not knowing the truth about Jesus. Wow. <clears throat> See, they think he's just a prophet. And uh, we have good news. <laughs> and it is good news. Kenny, did did you ever, and, and we talked about this <clears throat> last week on the phone, but, uh, you know, sitting sitting in our Sunday school <laughs> classes and, and <clears throat> in the CA chapel on Sunday evenings and uh, the worship services, did you ever... In your wildest dreams, could you even grasp or think of where God would take you? No, no. Uh, I didn't even think in terms of anything outside of Altoona back then. <laughs> uh, no, I couldn't imagine being back there. <laughs> <laughs> it... it that goes to show that our thoughts aren't his thoughts. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> go ahead. I, I have some several testimonies about that. I, uh, I don't even know where to begin, but uh, <clears throat> I was in uh, a country in Africa, and it was a pretty poor country. And I never, you know, you're, you're teaching about people how to reach Muslims, you know, thinking about their next door neighbor, or maybe, you know, maybe somebody in their own country, but this 
this one guy, he had the idea of being a missionary in another way in another part of Africa. And I thought, you know, how are you going to do this? You, you can't even, you can't even buy a banana. You know, we're thinking humanly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I said, I'd pray with him. I'd pray for him. I'd have to admit, I didn't have a lot of faith. But, you know, God, when God calls, he provides. And uh, a few years later, I was in that other country, and I was sitting in the front row. And somebody <laughs> tapped me on the shoulder, and I turned around, and there was this young guy who was from East Africa, and this was in West Africa. And I thought, wow, different language. Uh way far away, God was providing the need. I've met people, one guy had a ministry similar to ours, going around to the different churches in Nigeria, teaching people that we need to reach out to Muslims. They're not just our enemies. Another guy in Kenya was <coughs> telling me uh, his, and I still keep up with him on uh, Facebook. <laughs> it's kind of funny, some of the names they use is, the name of his ministry is Lifting the Sinkers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in our Sunday school class, it was Lifting the Stinkers. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, God can, God can. Another place, I was in Romania, and uh, I, it was back not too long after Ceausescu. You know, it, it was very poor, and uh, I would, at lunchtime, they, they would have a little bit of lunch. I'd send somebody down the street with a few dollars and let them buy fruit for everybody. Cause, and, uh, you know, several of them have gone, they've gone, you know, they're in Afghanistan, they're in Pakistan, they're in, uh, Turkey. Anyway, I got, I come home and about two years later, I got this, uh, uh, email f- and, and pictures from, probably one of the least that you would think he was in Turkey and he had been witnessing and discipling some Muslims who had given their heart to the Lord. And, uh, he had, he had baptized them. I can't remember a three or four of them, not a lot, but still he was out there doing it. And I, and I remember sharing this story not all of it. I, I said, how's he think he's going to, sometimes we Christians are foolish. Mm-hmm. And my, the director of our ministry, looked at me and he said, Ken, don't you think if God called them, he can provide the way? <laughs> so I answered in the affirmative, but I was thinking. In the negative. <laughs> it's amazing. You're right. It's amazing. I never dreamed, you know, I, I, I've lost count of the countries I've been in. I've been in over 50 countries just since, just since coming here. You know, the Lord gave us some great ministry in the Middle East uh, because of Saddam Hussein invading Kuwait and all that happened. I ended up in Brussels teaching. I was campus pastor in a seminary there. Uh, wonderful ministry. I didn't feel like I should be there because I speak Arabic, not French. And uh, But God had a reason. He wanted me to realize I need more education. And... Uh, a few years later, I was asked to join the staff at uh, what was then CMM, Center for Ministry of Muslims, and the rest has been a whirlwind. Now, my first trip, I'm, I'm kind of blathering on here, but... No, that's all right. First trip, I went with another guy <clears throat> uh, to southern India, way down I can't, in the province of Tamil Nadu. I can't remember the name of the city. And we taught at a Bible school there for a week, preached on the weekends, preached every night. I mean, they worked us to death. He said, we want to get our money's worth. <laughs> they didn't pay a penny for us to come, but they wanted to. And uh, we came back. We was flying old Northwest Airlines. We flew from Amsterdam. This was my first trip. Mm-hmm. From Amsterdam to Boston. Boston to Memphis, Memphis, into Springfield. Next morning I got up and those airplanes had hit the twin towers that morning. They came out of that very airport, Logan airport where we were the night before. And I said, you know, thinking about Saddam Hussein, the way he messed us up before I thought this is deja vu all over again, but you know, God had a plan and uh, we have been busy. 
and there's been a great demand for what we do. So praise the Lord. Uh, I have a I have a colleague. He has a term. He's we, you know we travel around the world. We do something, and you, you see a few results. You, you pray for more. He said you put another brick in the wall. <laughs> that's right. And that's what we keep doing. That's exactly right. When when you went on your first journey, uh, I imagine there was somewhat of a culture shock, shock as you went into different... Uh, yeah, you mean with, with CMM? Yes. We well, you know, I had lived in Egypt for a while, so you, you don't get a whole lot uh, more primitive than that. Uh, yeah, it's culture shock. Every time you go, it's different. Uh, every place you go is different. Last last year, I was in Fiji for a couple of weeks teaching in the Bible school there. Uh, wonderful place. They they have their population has now reached seven percent Muslims, and they said we don't know a thing about them. Nobody's ever come to tell us about them. Uh, yeah, it's culture shock. I know I was there. A, a big what we would call a hurricane hit the island and. Uh, we, I thought of Paul being in storms, you know, but uh, praise the Lord. I, uh, George, if I had to do it over again, I'd do it exactly the same way. I'll bet you would. I'll bet you would. Tell uh, me. We don't have time, but the stories I could tell you. Uh, tell me scary something. Scary airplane rides, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you felt the call of God to preach, and then later on, as you was telling us, you felt the call to work with the Muslims. Uh, when when was it, Kenny, that you initially felt the call of God to preach the gospel? You know, George, that's a that's a tough question. I think I always knew that God was leading me that way, even though I had backslid and wasn't. Uh, living exactly the way the Lord would want me to. I, I felt that he had his hand on my life. And uh, I went to Bible school not really knowing uh, what would happen. But while I was there, I had a very real experience with God. And I knew I knew that uh, he was calling me into ministry. Didn't know exactly what at the time. And I thought, Lord, I don't know how you can use me. I, I can't get up and talk in front of the crowd, my face gets red, my knees knock. But, uh, you know, he uses the simple and find the one. And, find the one. <laughs> uh. and to go to school and get a doctor, doctoral degree, uh, my mother told somebody that one, one time, and this girl said, Kenny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He would come to school without his homework assignments done. <laughs> but you know, Kenny, I... But God can use us. I God can, can use us. I can picture us. Uh, and I don't know why it's just uh, primarily when we were in, in Tom Hamilton's Sunday school class, but I can yeah. picture us down there in the basement of the Red Brick Church. Uh, mm -hmm. And most of us would kick our chairs and lean them back against the wall. Yeah. Uh, for some reason... I'm able to picture that and see us in that Sunday school room. And then as I look ahead and see the journey that so many have taken that went yeah. to the Assembly of God Church, it just blows me away, brother. And you, you, and I've, I've told you this before, there is a kindred spirit between you and I. I, yeah. don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't even try to understand what it is. All I know that it is. Uh, and when, when I think about your ministry is so unique. Uh, remember when we used to have the, all the missionaries that used to come through the church at different times? Oh, man, do uh, I ever. <laughs> uh, all week long, every night, man. Yes. They would hold me spellbound. <laughs> And, and they would show their slides, uh, yeah. you know, and those, those type of things. But when I think about Kenny Ferguson, I think about a unique ministry, uh, particularly with what's happened over the years with, with 
with with our enemies in the Far East and so on and so forth. But that call, that call, that call yeah. from the cross, uh, it's beckoning. That's what keeps you on the firing line. That's right. It's beckoning uh, red, yellow, black, white. Makes no difference. Mm. Yeah. But the call of the cross, and it's still the blood, regardless of what name we have above our head, how we're stereotyped, it's still and only the blood that's going to change an individual. And when I think of your ministry, with you and Kathy, Kathy, you lived in Egypt for some time, so Kathy was with you, right? Yeah. Yeah, she was with me and right right by my side all the way in Jordan, Egypt, and then Brussels. Yeah. When you go into these countries, and even now, there's got to be a certain danger aspect to it. You know, I've I've been asked that many times, and honestly, whether it's stupidity or if the Lord <laughs> just gives you a special uh, anointing, I don't think of it. You know, I was in in Joss, Nigeria, twice, and. Before the first, I mean, after the first time and after the second time, there were terrible riots there, They're killing uh, Christians and Christians killing Muslims too. And uh, one guy that was in my, that was my driver the first time, he got shot, and uh, his nephew was my driver the next time. And there was a guy in my class who was a superintendent. He was responsible for starting 19 churches in that district in Muslim regions was threatened. His daughter was raped. I'm beaten. And after I left about a year after I left, he, he was murdered. He was killed. They cut his arms off, cut his uh, legs off, plucked his eyes out. <clears throat> uh, his name Tetu, T S E T U. And I'll never forget it. Cause I'd forgotten my reading glasses one day in class. And he walked up and he said, here brother, like an African does hands him, to me with two two hands and they they were perfect i often thought about that mm. he, he paid he paid he paid dearly for what he did uh you know i've left places i, I don't know what the time element is here but no, we got time bro. Uh, i remember uh being in kyrgyzstan most americans don't even know where that is and uh uh I was there at the Bible school in Bishkek, and they asked me to come back. And they were starting a uh, extension class down south, right on the Uzbekistan border. Very stronghold for Islam pastors, and and the stories I could I could spend uh, you know a couple hours here telling you stories of different students, incredible stories. Because every one of them, well, sixteen out of eighteen of them were former Muslims. But uh, this one, I, I had to go over to the city of Osh because I couldn't get a flight out of there, and I went, flew out of Osh. And he took me over. I met his wife, three children. They're from both from Muslim families, laying their life on the line. And she said in her broken English as we departed, she said, "Brother, pray for me, pray for me." He said, "She said, my brother, he." Hezbollah, Hezbollah, you know Hezbollah? I said, are you saying Hezbollah? She said, yes. I said, yeah, I know Hezbollah. I lived in Jordan. He went to kill me. <clears throat> you know, and I could go there and teach and do things. If I get on a plane, I come back to my comfortable home in America, and they stay there. <sighs> to leave? How, how can I not? To leave, to leave... Islam means death, doesn't it? It could mean death, and <laughs> often does. Uh, it, it depends on the, the country you're in or, or the uh, strata of society you're in. Uh, at least it's going to cause Austria. Aust yeah, you know. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> and uh, and and you're going to you're going to be cast out not only socially. But you're going to lose your job. A guy in Jordan got saved. He 
He was an early radar technician, early warning radar technician. Well, you know, in a little country like Jordan, there's not many places to get a job like that. Right. Uh, but, you know, God sustains them. And I, I just today, I, I wrote a discipleship course and some years ago, and uh, they decided they wanted to make a book out of it. I've been going through tweaking it. And just today, I was reading that part about discipleship. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it costs. It, it does cost. And sometimes it, it may literally cost our lives. But, you know, get to get back to your question, I I don't think about it. <clears throat> and uh, it's not that I'm that brave, you know. <laughs> but uh, do you, do you God re- helps us. Do you remember that song we used to sing, Kenny? Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Yeah. You remember that? I remember it well. Uh, those songs are easy enough to sing yeah but when we really sit down and take the words to heart uh, that's a whole different animal isn't it yeah a cross before me the world behind me yeah well a cross is made to die on <laughs> yes yes uh <laughs> i re- <laughs> i remember someone once said and i don't i don't recall who it was but someone once said that if America, and this was years ago, if America don't get right, uh, we're going to have to have missionaries from other countries come back here. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 it's so, I don't know what the word is. It's so heartbreaking uh, yeah. when we look at it. But well, I've seen it in Europe, you know, living there, the very cradle of the Reformation, and, uh, you know, today, uh, church after church has been turned into mosque, and uh, <clears throat> it's sad. We've got a lady in the chat room that said, uh, <clears throat> totally off the subject a bit, but has Ken ever visited any of the troops overseas? Did you ever visit any of the troops when you were... No, I, 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 they keep pretty isolated uh i've been i remember landing in kirk in kirkstan they had a whole row of the uh the big uh carriers uh i mean the cargo carriers you know they were uh flying in and out of afghanistan and th- th- these were su- supplies and then other places you know in egypt you'd see i'd meet them now and then but never had the opportunity to minister to them except uh, I was invited uh, to a couple of military churches. Uh, it was not downrange, but like uh, in Japan and Germany. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, my brother, you know, ministered to the military. That was his. Uh, that was his assignment. It's a great need. With all that's going on in the world today. <clears throat> Excuse me. I read when I read that about uh, was it Iran or, or Iraq, uh, but so many people leaving Islam and accepting Christ. Uh, one more time, Espinlaw was slapped upside his head and said, yeah. "And say, you see, you see, yeah, yeah." Uh, with our little pea brains, we look through this little knot hole in the fence. When we lose our way, sometimes we lose our sight, and re- and don't forget to realize that God is looking over everything, and there's just no greater. And when He does it, it's done. Period. Yeah, yeah, He does it. That's right. The. The ministry, and you're still going, right? You're still going strong. I mean, yeah, I don't plan on retiring until I drop in the saddle, or I, you know, I get so <laughs> old I can't uh, move anymore. I, you know, what would I do? I get up in the morning. I want, I want something to to live for. Uh, you're right. I am passionate about it. I, you know, I have to say that I am very passionate about it. <clears throat> you speak Arabic, but Yes, not as well as I used to when I lived there, but 
Yeah. You're uh, could could you give us just a little bit of history of Islam? Yeah. Uh you know, it depends on who you're talking to. Uh if you ask somebody when Islam began, the Muslim would say in the beginning. They would say Adam was a Muslim and Seth was a Muslim and Moses was a Muslim, Jesus was a Muslim and and, and that's the story they give. But Muhammad you know, was born in 570, and this is this is a uh, <clears throat> this is pretty much the accepted view. We 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 don't have real, with all that's been said, we don't have real uh, hard evidence. Uh, but he was born in in Mecca, and uh, when he started to have his uh, visions and uh, calling or uh, whatever it was. I mean, there's different ideas as to what that was, whether it was a demon or some say he sounded like an epileptic fit. Uh, he was rejected by his family because his family controlled the Kaaba, the, the square building there where they go and every year for the, and back then there were like 365 deities and every day a different tribe came there to worship their God and, of course, they, they, you know, had to have a place to stay and place to eat. And, you know, they made their living that way. And all of a sudden, Muhammad starts saying, there is no God but Allah. All these gods are not gods. We had kind of the right idea. He heard that from the Christians and the Jews. But his family didn't like that. Of course, he got, like it's short, kicked out. His group finally went up to Medina. <clears throat> and then uh, 10 years later, he comes, or 11 years later, he comes back and, uh, there were other wars and battles with other groups, but he comes back and marches into Mecca, establishes that. As... Now, there's a, there's a lot of modern history, but because actually uh, we can't find Muhammad in a, in a historical document until 200 years after his death. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, usually you can find stuff a little closer to that. Some people even question the existence of Muhammad uh, and because of the <clears throat> the way the, the you know the mosques have this uh, they call the mihrab, which uh, points the way to Mecca, and the early early ones they believed that, that that they prayed toward Jerusalem, but with more scientific equipment we find out that that those things are not pointing to Jerusalem; they're pointing to uh, Petra. And they're thinking that maybe that was where it all began. And, uh, you know, it's so many confused. Anyway, uh, he, he develops his um, empire. His, his followers, uh, uh, enlarged it. Uh, he had the, the guy who came after, after him was, a uh, was a good organizer. A mil the next one was a military genius. They started going out and conquering. And uh, after the fourth, I call them caliph, there would be no more prophets, but they were the uh, uh, deputy of the prophet. After the fourth one, uh, it was they thought it would be Ali. And Ali was a, Muhammad had no son, so he was a son-in-law and also a cousin. He some groups thought he should be it. The other ones thought another guy should be it. And they fought. Uh, one group was the Sunnis. The other, the other group was the Shias. The Shias were outclassed. Ali uh, had been martyred. His two sons died in that battle. And uh, his, there was only one of his grandsons that lived. I'm sorry, great... Uh, yeah, anyway, one of his uh, survivors. <clears throat> and they became the Shiites. And consequently, today, the Iranians, and there are pockets of them in other places in the world. But that was a big division. And one of the things I missed there, and I, when they went to uh, Medina, that's called the Hijra, the journey. They traveled, they, they moved. And that became... Uh, significant because Muhammad supposedly, well, it actually happened, but in, in their minds, it, uh, 
he got this revelation from God. He said uh, to the Muslims, you are not, you are not a people, but now you are a people. You're a family, the best kind. And, uh, you do service to, to your Lord. And <clears throat> that's where they get the idea of what they call the Uma, the community. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, 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 uh, that's what holds uh, the Islamic world together. Now, they, yes, they are family oriented. They love their families. But the main thing is that you're Islamic. And uh, if you leave Islam, uh, you leave your family. And one of the great scholars said, uh, it may be true that blood is thicker than water, but when it comes to apostasy, it can be spilled as easily as water. Ooh. He, no, he 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 left his family, and his family now were former Muslims. So you, when I teach this, I put concentric circles up, and you have the the family, and you have the uh, the, the tribe, and the clan, and the the nation, and then the Arab world, and then the, the Muslim world. <clears throat> if somebody wants to leave Islam, and they're in the heart of that thing, they have to go through all of that, uh, you know, and you're outside. Wow. The cross is outside. And we think it, you know, it's it's an easy decision just to. I don't even like the term so much. Accept Christ. Uh, you, you do accept Christ, but you accept His message. You accept His cross and and all that goes with it. And that's what a Muslim has to go through. It's not just like what shoes am I going to wear today? <laughs> right, right, right. Do the Sunnis and the Shiites now? They have bitter friction between them at times, right? Yeah, the, the the you know the first Gulf War down there that was between Iran and Iraq that was, uh, well, and, and there are a lot of Shiites in Iraq. Matter of fact, the majority are. But uh, yeah, they're always fighting about. It. And now you have uh, Iran stirring up trouble in Yemen and fighting against uh, uh, the the. The Sunnis there, who are sponsored by Saudi Arabia, and uh, there's been a lot of blood spilled. I had a guy in India. There's another group, here, but we would call them the. There are a lot of groups. It's fractured many ways, but uh, the Sufis, and and they probably would consider themselves Sunnis, but they're the Charismatics, and you know they, uh, they're uh, it's a, they they like uh, experience. You know they they. Think you can feel God, but or as soon as it's, no, you you can't have experience with God. He's 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 always transcendent. But uh, I was in oh I think I can't remember Bangladesh or India, and this guy was telling me that he, he, he told me his testimony. He was from a Sufi village, <laughs> and some Sunnis came and they were having a, a discussion, and it got into a heated argument, a fight. It was that group of Sunnis came back that night and burned their village down. Uh, you know, but you know, when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to who they are, identity, they're Muslims. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, we might fight with our brother, but boys, let somebody else fight with him. And I'm, yep. we all jump on that guy. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I so, can't, I can't help but sit here thinking, uh, in our twisted, torn, whatever adjective we might want to use, world that we live in, uh, I'm so glad that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost aren't fractured. Yeah. And we all know, and I think the agnostics, skeptics, whatever title they want to walk under, the God-haters, the Christian-haters, whatever it might be, everyone knows, or if they don't know, they will, and I believe that time's coming soon, that every knee shall bow, yeah. and every tongue confess that Jesus He's Lord. Bottom yeah, line. It's all about Jesus. Yes. It's all about Jesus. And when I think and of... They, go ahead. They, 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 Muhammad, his whole life was 
bringing Jesus down and having people uh, lift him up. You know, he, he said he went to heaven. He went he went on a, a winged animal to Jerusalem, and uh, from there he uh, tradition says he ascended into heaven. He went through the seven levels of heaven, and he saw. He says he saw Jesus in the second level. And, uh, of course, we know he's not in the second level of heaven. He's at the right hand of the majesty on high. It's always, you know, lowering Jesus, always bringing him down. He's just a prophet. But I am the seal of the prophet, the last prophet. Right. Anyway, yeah, it's uh, we, have, we have a glorious gospel. They work for their to be accepted by God. God, we know that God has loved us before, uh, before we even turned to him and gave his son to die for us. He loved us. It's an amazing, Uh, it's an amazing, amazing gospel. Yeah. Good news. Good news. Yeah. No, no religion like it, is there? No, (laughs) no. And it's real. It's real. We used to sing uh, something about, down in my soul, it's real, it's real. Uh, there was, it's real, it's real. I know it's real. That's it. That's Praise it. God, the doubts are settled. I know it's real. Yes, indeedy. <laughs> yes, indeedy. Kenny, my time has just slipped right on by. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Will you come back another time with me, brother? Yeah, I will. I will. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever had my brother on, Ed? No, no. But if, if, that, that might be an interesting conversation because he worked with military. Uh, he when he was at Ramstein, uh, in and out of the hosp- hospital there, people had gotten uh, wounded. You know, I, I just thought of that since that lady sent that question. You might enjoy talking to him. Yeah, if, if you will uh, uh, send him in my direction. My, I haven't talked to Eddie in I don't know how many, many, many moons. Yeah. <clears throat> but give him my phone number and, and the whole nine yards. I'll do it. <clears throat> and I, I, I'd gladly. I remember. Uh, <laughs> I remember when. Of course, Eddie was older than we were, but I remember yeah. when he worked at, at your Uncle Bill's service station. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was always I was always finding a way of getting in trouble. I, I just, uh, I was a goof. <laughs> I, you know, I'll be the first of them, but I was a goof. And, and Eddie, I'd stop in the store, and Eddie used to talk to me. And I remember he'd take me back where they kept the ice cream sandwiches. You know, you'd open that little lid, and they'd be yeah. down in there. Yeah, back there in the corner, yeah. <clears throat> and he used to say, jump up here. And I'd, I'd sit on one part of it, and he'd reach in, he'd get me an ice cream sandwich. Mm-hmm. And he'd say, Georgie, listen to me. <laughs> and I, I've never I've never forgotten that. <laughs> uh, I hope he hasn't either, because uh, he fed me quite a few <laughs> ice cream sandwiches talking to me. <laughs> Out of the goodness and the kindness of his heart. So, yeah, send send Eddie my way. Please do that. I'll do that. Right now, you know, he's living here in Springfield now, but right now he's in Arizona, and I think, I think until March. Okay. And uh, But he can call you from there. I mean, that's not a problem. He's going to be busy there. That's selling right. their place out there. But uh, Yeah, have, uh, him, have him get a hold of me, Kenny, and we'll, we'll, we'll book him, set him up. Uh, that would be so much, so much fun. Good. And listen, my brother. I'll do it. You go in for knee surgery on Monday, as it is? Yeah, Monday. And we'll be praying for you. Uh, I love you, brother. Hey, I love you too, George. You know, I uh, many of us have, uh, God, has, God has been gracious to all of us, but some of us have responded. There's a lot in that youth group that hadn't responded, and uh, my heart grieves, but uh, praise the Lord, George. It's Good to know you're you're hanging in there. <laughs> I love you, brother. And you tell Eddie to look me up and uh, get up and about from that knee surgery, and we'll do this again. Yeah. Okay, George. All right. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. My goodness gracious. Uh, we go a long way back. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, Romans, and countrymen. (laughs) That little full gospel church in Altoona, Pennsylvania, that started right on the corner of 8th Street there in Pleasant Valley, 
just a stone's throw from my house. It started there when I was, well, it started there before I was born. But that little white wooden church, I watched it grow from a little wooden church on the corner to a bigger brick facility and then moved down all the way a full block with nothing but a huge facility where people could come and worship. I remember on our our red brick church that was connected to the little wooden white church, we had on top of it, above the the entrance, you'd walk up the steps and then go in the door. But up on top, Pastor Williams had a a sign, a lit neon sign. And this was back in the day put up there. And that cross stood way up in the air. And at nighttime it would be lit up. And it said, Jesus saves. I can see that cross in my mind's eye. To this day, I can see the little white church, the red church, and then the bigger church as it progressed down the way and God blessed that church and it grew. And I think, my goodness gracious, there was a lot of, lot of ministers that come out of that church. Kenny, his brother Eddie, who is older than, than each of us, he was a missionary <clears throat> and he ministered to the military. I think he was in Amsterdam for uh, a lot of years. Uh, my, it just go. We had Stan Williams on here a couple weeks ago. He came out of that church. Uh, there were so many, so many. But my, oh, my, did I enjoy it tonight so much. The man, the man that I've known my entire life, and he spent a lifetime in ministry. I tip my hat to him, and I bow my knee, and I ask God, just keep him right in the center of his hand. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I've been touched. Wow. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get on out of here. Charlie and I are going to beat feet. <laughs> we're going to beat feet out of here. I got a phone call that I've, I'm expected at 930 about some other details of the show and so on and so forth. But I sure hope that you enjoyed it tonight. And if you know someone that didn't listen tonight, tell them. Get in there and listen to the George Espinlove show. Listen to what that man had to say. There's so much. We, we have to have him come back after he recuperates and gets up on his feet. We have to have him come back so we can learn some more. My goodness gracious. But I'm so glad he was able to be with us tonight. Thank you, Kenny. Here's what's on tack. You like wrestling? <laughs> well, you like women rest- wrestling? Well, Friday night, we have a young lady from WOW, Women Women of Wrestling. It's a new wrestling organization that's been formed several years ago. Selena Majors will be with us. Uh, so you pass the word. I mean, we've got something for everybody around here. <laughs> so you pass the word. We'll have Selena Majors on Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, right here on Spreaker.com on the George Espinlove Show. And as always, we'll be live. (laughs) And so if anything happens while we're live, burps, blemishes, blips, bloopers, (laughs) you get to experience it with us. Sometimes it's hilarious. Sometimes it's frustrating. But by the time it's all over and said, it is quite funny. Hey, guys, girls, boys, friends, Romans, and countrymen, wherever you're at, if it's nighttime, have a good night. If it's already tomorrow, you have a great day. And until then, join me Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, right here on Spreaker, live for the George Usman Love Show. Until then, stay safe, be kind one another, 
love one another, help one another, and may God keep you right in the center of his hand. Good night, everybody.